So we've got Luke Sandler here with me. Thank you for joining me, Luke. And you are a London DJ and producer and you work full time as an NHS doctor. So two crazy different worlds. Very interesting. I have many questions for you. And uh, you just recently released your five track EP. Uh, so obviously want to hear all about that. And it was released on Mind of Ours. So you've got to tell us about Mind of Ours as well, because that is your audiovisual collaborative. So tell me how it's been going with the release so far of your EP. Um, I, I think it's been going well. Uh, I've never really released a full EP before, so I've got nothing to compare it to, but I've had loads of positive feedback from people that I know and people that I don't know, which has been really nice. Um, and a bit of a surprise. I didn't, I didn't think my music was going to go down quite that well. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, been, it's, it's been awesome um, just hearing how much everyone's been enjoying it. Um, and uh, it's actually had a bit more appeal to people that necess aren't necessarily into house or techno than I thought it would. Um, yeah. that, that's been refreshing as well. That's good to hear, actually. And I think, I mean, I can say from listening to the EP, it's like, I do actually think the tunes are really relatable because you use a lot of samples in there, which we'll get on to, which sort of, you know, they draw you in and you, there's, to me anyway, the quotes that make me think, oh, you know, it, it kind of gets you thinking. Um, so you also released your single Don't Think just ahead of the EP and this track absolutely went off. So tell me a bit about this song, the inspiration for it. Um... So this was a track I first started making when we started running the Mind of Ours events. And I had a very specific moment in, in a night for a party in mind. Um, and it's, it's actually the moment after the party's peaked and everyone's kind of just completely going with the flow. Um, and you want to bring everyone into this sort of special atmosphere or special place. Uh, and it took me quite a while to sort of dial that in. Um, and I played quite a few versions, but then when I hit this version and I managed luckily to play al almost this version out at one of the last events we ran just before lockdown um, and the reaction it had on the dance floor, I just, I just knew I'd, I'd, I'd hit, hit something. <laughs> I'd yeah. absolutely smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, uh, you know, when it was released and I was sort of watching it all going off on uh, socials and everything and people were just nothing but great comments and, I think, you know, you even had plays on BBC, didn't you? Um, you know, big outfits playing your music. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, I mean, for, who was your, which DJs are your inspiration? And I don't know, what's, what's a setting maybe? What inspires you when you are making this music? Um, so it basic, I think for me, the, pi the pinnacle of my experience within dance music has always been Warehouse Project in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Um, and whenever I'm struggling for inspiration, I always try and think back to the, the, the nights that I've been to there and the energy that's been there. Um, and uh, there's, they cover such a wide variety, but what sort of brings it together is just the energy and the atmosphere. Um, and, and I think my music's probably more varied than some DJs and producers who sort of stick to one lane. Um, and although I cover perhaps a slightly wider sound, I always try and think, would, would someone be able to get away with playing this in a warehouse project set? Um, okay. And <laughs> if, if, I, if I can get somewhere near that, then I'm usually happy with the outcome. Yeah, I mean, Warehouse Project is, is a fantastic event, right? It's like a, a mini festival indoors, isn't it? Like you yeah. say, the atmosphere is crazy. So, you know what? I think that's a really good sort of vision or aim to have. If you can get that sort of sound for that event right, then hitting the nail on the head, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, of course, you know, this brings me on to the rest of your EP because you, you've done so well with Don't Think. And the rest of the EP has, you know, you've got the five tracks on there. Which is your favourite track on there? So, I think at, at one point, and, and it's probably a good thing, generally when I'm making them, they've all been my favourite. But once, yeah. the, once the dust has settled and I can now compare them all, um, and what I can listen to now, because after you've heard them all a thousand times, there's, there's some that you can't hear anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My favorite track is actually the last one on the EP, um, the track called Cara. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I'm really happy with the way the tracks come out sonically, but then also um, it kind of means a bit, a bit more to me. Um, the story behind that track is um, my sister got pretty sick just at the start of the first lockdown um, and n no one in my family really knew what to do. Right. Uh, at that time, I was focusing on writing lots and lots of music. Um, and I, 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 I didn't know how to deal with it. So I, um, I just, I was chatting to her a bit about her favorite songs and her, her favorite, um, sort of musical artists and everything. Uh, and then I wanted to get a taste of that and try and put it in my music and kind of write her a song, try and cheer her up. Yeah. Um, and I, that song came, came together really fast, which is generally a, a, a sign for me that I've got an idea that's kind of working. I didn't have to force yeah. anything. Um, and then it, she, re she really um, loved the song at the time. Uh, and then it kind of um, just sat on my hard drive until it came time to sort of put the EP together and select the tracks. Yeah. And I didn't, ne didn't necessarily consider it at first, um, but at some point, I think one of my friends suggested that I should put that on the EP. And then when it, when it did go into the EP with the other tracks, it just added a whole new flavor yeah. um, and kind of acted as a really nice ending point for what could be um, quite a journey sonically through the through the whole EP. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've I've listened to all of the tracks, and I have listened to Cara. I'm guessing your sister's name is Cara. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, your story for this song is really beautiful, and I think it would touch many people's hearts because you know lots of people go through a similar thing. And beauty as well. I think when people, especially music lovers going through a hard time you do put your energy into music and it's just you know it's really really impressive how you've turned this emotional roller coaster into such a brilliant track um and it, it also leads me on to this what i wanted to ask you about samples because i know that in this song there's a sample that says my thoughts are with you and that yeah. really links to the situation that you're just talking about so obviously there was meaning behind that so tell me a bit more about the samples and how you came to choose them um so it, it's, uh, uh, so I was basically asking my, asking my sister who her favorite artists were, like I said, and, and it's, it's someone, it's someone disgustingly famous and it's a song, it's, it's a really, really famous song, like one that you could play at a party and everybody would scream and yeah. everybody's going to dance for from a totally different genre. Um, but I had, I, I, I was like, right, how can I? Because it was a, when she was like, that's my favorite song. And I was like, right, well, I want to use bits of that. But yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how I can make that listenable in a sort of <laughs> house and techno field. So what I did is I um, got, got, got the track, got the instrumental track, and then used the instrumental to cancel out the instrumental from the whole track. And then you're just left with like an artifact of the vocal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then from that, I pitched it down to a different key and then started chopping the words out of it right. um, and then okay. re and then re-sliced all the words to start saying completely different lyrics oh um, wow okay that's in, cool. in, a, in a completely different key to the songs sung in but i think one of the reasons that i think some everybody likes it so much is i think it's still got a bit of that sound from yeah. a song that's from way back that everybody would love yeah. and i think subconsciously they, their brain is like, oh yeah, we really like this song. Yeah, like, yeah, I couldn't recognize this. And yeah, but that's the best thing, isn't it? When you're on the dance floor and you're hearing the song, you're like, oh, I know this, I know what's coming on, but yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, that's, that's really, really cool. So a bit of um, technical talk there. And uh, it's so interesting to hear how you have put that together. So um, if you don't mind me asking, how old is your sister? So she, that's a really good question. I should know the answer to it. I'm going to say she is, <laughs> she's going to kill me if I get this wrong. Um, Completely embarrassed you. Here. <laughs> no, I, I think she's 29 and I'm quite certain of that. You know, yeah. Right. Okay. So she's probably at this point got quite a refined, you know, music taste and um, she knows what she likes. So I am sure she absolutely loves this track. So I just, yeah, I think it's fantastic what you've done with. Cara and also I heard you talking because you've done like a set of videos where you explain like the inspiration between each song um, and yeah. behind each song even and um, yeah you you tell me a bit more about the rest of the music then on the EP. 
Sure. So, uh, I mean, the, the first the first track, Tommy Hilfiger, um, I started writing. I, I'd I've been in London for a while, but I, I just moved to East London, um, and there's kind of a different energy in East London compared to South London. Yeah. Uh, that got me thinking about all the pirate radio stations that used to be in East London um, in the '90s, and that's kind of left a bit of a um, a cultural impact upon East London and the sort of rave scene in general because. Um, they kind of went hand in hand. Um, and as for my production style, which is, I, I really like to find samples and try and weave them into my tracks. Um, Pirate Radio and all, all the early 90s radio has left some like um, a, an absolute gold mine of samples if you know where to look on the internet. Yeah. Um, so I kind of had all this sort of 90s en energy racing around my head, um, but didn't want to make a 90s track. I kind of wanted to reinterpret it and just make something a bit sort of funky. Um, and so I, I was collecting all these samples and uh, it was just an absolute mess. But then I, I found this, found this one sample of some kid shouting about like Tommy Hilfiger. Um, yeah, it's good and, though. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, well, the, the, I think that was over like a jungle track and it was, it was way faster. But then when I slowed it down, it kind of had this weird feel to it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just something a bit weird, but it really ear catching and kind of memorable. Yeah. Um, sure. So I, I just kind of used that and then um, threw all these samples together and kind of, I, I just kind of got this, I guess, sonic palette um, yeah, of, of yeah. all the influences of that. There's one that I really love and it's in your track, We Go From Here. And yeah. it's a sample that says, music, I'm reading it now, I have got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> music doesn't happen to the people, people happen to the music. And I just think, that is so great. And tell me your view on that quote, because there's, there's quite a lot around that. Yeah, so I, I think that that quote, I, I was kind of thinking about how music and live streams, certainly for the younger generation, have been a massive, a massive thing this this year like there's not there's not much to do and there's only so much so much netflix you can watch right yeah <laughs> sure and and the the idea that sort of um waves of music whether it be um punk or rave or indie or like rock like happened um by accident and then were just put upon a generation of people it's kind of the other the other way around to it actually is yeah it, it's a generation of people that make the, these sounds yeah. um, and that's going to be affected by everything that's happening. And I guess it's exciting for me that um, an entire generation of musicians, producers have had an entire year just to sit down and, and no yeah. excuses not to be making music. Yeah. So it's really, it's really, it's really exciting as to what's going to happen in all genres over the next few years, because everybody's had a kind of, um, when I say a moment, I guess a year to think. Right, what's going on with my sound, and where's it going to go? Where's it going to go next? Um, yeah. So I think we're going to see some really interesting, interesting sounds coming from everywhere um, as everybody starts releasing all this music they've been writing. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? You are definitely one of them. And it it leads me nicely onto uh, you know the fact that we have just had lockdowns. You know, back to back. We're in a the middle of a pandemic well hopefully we're sort of coming out of it you are also <laughs> an nhs doctor working on the front line and making all of this music has lockdown helped you to focus more because you've not been able to go out or has it not i mean how has it been for you having this busy schedule as a doctor as well as making all of this music um so i think the first lockdown Helped me to write, helped me to get a lot of music written. Um, and it gave me some time to, like I said, there's no excuses when there's nothing else to do. So I was like, right, I, I'm just going to sit down and write loads of music. Um, and I was able to sort of develop my sound and get a sort of cohesive collection of um, tracks together, which will be coming out over the next year, year or so. Yeah. Um, and that, that was quite exciting. I think the second lockdown, for me, because I work in A and E, was much much worse, mm. uh, and um, there was, and I think everybody found the second lockdown way harder. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was in the winter. Um, for me, work was absolutely mental. Um, some re like really bad stuff going on. 
But well, then... actually, I saw a photo that you had posted, I think in January, that was during that lockdown, I think. But you're in this like full on yellow PPE. Everyone in the background is like all in their PPE. And it's quite a remarkable photo amongst all of these other photos of your music and everything. Yeah. Um... I think my, my friend just, uh, it was kind of taken as a joke by my friend because um, it was just, it was, it was just so surreal. Um, yeah. It's the sort of things that, that um, happen in movies and yet you never actually think it's going to happen to you. But then when they start getting all the sort of chemicals, giant boiler suits out and you're like, right, wow. Um, it's real, it's, yeah. It's, well, yeah. I mean, it still hasn't really sunk in everything that was happening. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess I, I put that up because I just wanted some people to see what what what, what was going on. Um, well, I guess, uh, well, you know, your music. Do, have you found that making your music whilst having this super stressful uh, job, and obviously the pandemic has made the job even more stressful, has music been a release for you when you come home and you're like, right, get down, make some music, forget uh, what's going on at work. It's been, it's been more of a therapy, I think, than a release. Um, I am, I mean, it, all my friends and everyone close, I'm obsessed with music um, and it allowing me to sort of throw myself into it and be writing tracks has just given me something to do that's constructive outside of work yeah. um, and allow me to sort of carry on functioning as a semi-normal person. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Completely relate. I mean, you know, I've, I've always been a big believer in, you know, outside of work, have the thing that you do. And, you know, you just put yourself into it. I think it helps you have that balance, doesn't it? Um, because, you know, any job can be stressful. But you, t you talk about, you know, outside of work, being productive, doing cool things. And one of the things I noticed that you have been doing was virtual uh, live streams. And one in particular, you're on a really cool rooftop, it looks like. And you also promoted it as having like super cool visuals from Mind of Ours. So there's a couple of questions I have around that. Where was the location? And also, what are your team like? Because like the content that came out of that was just incredible. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess the whole Mind of Ours thing is, um, it started off basically with me and a few friends wanting to run some really good parties. But then we kind of, when we boiled it down to what we wanted to be doing. It's that we wanted to be running parties like nobody had ever been to before. Yeah. So um, we felt we had the music side covered, but we, but we weren't able to deliver sort of on the visual experience. So yeah. luckily through friends of friends, um, I got in touch with uh, some crazy talented visual artists who um, just, just take you to another dimension. Um, some of them do all their sort of visual art on computers and videos. Others are like lighting technicians that can just make the make, make any space look like it's sort of from another world. Yeah, yeah. And the live stream, we snuck up onto a friend of ours, um, I guess tower block. We snuck up onto the roof right. um, in the middle of lockdown to try and do an outside socially distanced yeah, um, course, set. Yeah. So we kept it to six people we all had face masks on um and then we uh kind of just plugged in and just did this two minute uh sorry two hour um set at sunrise over the skyline of london yeah um, no honestly it was it was like powerful and I, I think in the middle of lockdown as well for people to be able to see this sort of content it's yeah it, it's sort of helpful it's like <laughs> It, and the visuals, like you say, were just fantastic. It kind of takes you away, doesn't it? Yeah, because um, there have been so many, so many live streams and everyone's done it in their own style, but we kind of wanted to give people something to really watch and, and have an experience yeah. in, in, their, in their homes um, rather than just a video of somebody standing by some decks for a few hours. Yeah. Um, and our visual artists absolutely smashed it out of the park. Yeah. Um, and anybody that hasn't seen it should just go and look at the Mind of Ours live stream because it is wild. Absolutely. Uh, Where can they see that? I mean, we'll, we'll, we will do a whole sweep up of what your socials yeah. are, but uh, where can they see that? Is there a YouTube? There's a YouTube. Yeah, so, so, yeah it's, on, it's online. Um, Mind of Ours live stream one. Um, and and it's, uh, it's all there for the taking.
Brilliant. So this brings me on to the future and, you know, are you planning any more live streams? I mean, we're in a different place now, things are opening up. Or have you got actual gigs planned in? <laughs> um, so I think we're going to try and get some actual live events lined up because um, that's kind of where our event does best. Mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to get some venues sorted. And then as, as soon as we've got um, a venue sorted, uh, we'll be organizing um, a lineup and uh getting the word out and hopefully it will it will be a night to remember um because all the previous, all the previous parties have been beyond everybody's expectations to be fair yeah. and um i mean there's nothing like live music right and just being in the venue having a drink with your mates having a little dance and just enjoying the atmosphere and i think one thing that i really love about your events as well so mine of ours uh is that you are linked to a charity. So tell me about how you're linked to the charity and what you, you do with that. So uh, myself and Dom, who's the, the, the other guy that um, set up the party, we wanted to run a party, but we didn't, we weren't like, oh, we want to run a party to try and make loads of money. Uh, we want to try and do something, I guess, good from it. And we were discussing between ourselves and um, our friends as to what we thought would be a, a good reason to do it. And I guess everybody, especially after the last year, has had their own experiences with uh, mental health problems. And if you're lucky enough not to have had your own mental health problem, I'm, I'm certain you probably know someone that does. Um, so we settled on the charity of Mind um, that we both know does lots of great work. Uh, and all the profits from the, the parties that we run do go to, to Mind at the end of it. Mm. Um, and it's, I guess it's just nice to feel like not only are, are we doing something that, that's fun and enjoyable for people, but we're also give it, giving a little something back. Um, and I guess it was before we decided that we'd actually called the event Mind of Ours, um, more because we wanted just to, to make, just to sum something up that was kind of, um, it's something that it's everybody's, the event. Um, yeah. And people that are coming to it are as much a, a part of it as we are to yeah. try and curate it. Um, and it's just a, a nice, happy coincidence that they both fit in. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's it really works very well. And like you say, you know, lockdown has been tough on everybody. And um, it is fantastic that you guys are giving back in that way. So, um, yeah, it is absolutely brilliant. So uh, the other question that I wanted to ask you is, you know, you've, you've probably played other places. So you've got this huge event the collaborative of mind of ours but i'm sure you've done gigs yourself where's the the coolest venue that you have played at um so i mean i've played some cool places in london played on some really cool rooftops um and i've played in some really sketchy warehouses out in east london uh and they're all very cool uh my favorite place to play was a venue that i used to play at university and it was called um grace club and the night was called swingers oh, okay. uh, and, it, and it was just this is in newcastle, new, right? this is in newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> it is just it's wild it's an, no matter the time of the year all the weather whether it's snowing raining boiling hot weather the the main bit of the club is outside in an alley and yeah. there's disco lights and decorations down sort of a, a, like a ceiling of camo netting and um everything and it's sort of 70s themed and you're supposed to play just like disco and and yeah. i guess classics for everybody to sing along to um and, and i would do that but i'd kind of put a more i guess uh housey techno yeah. feel to it and every so often and we'd have a great time and everybody and the dance floor would be amazing and it'd just be going off every so often the promoter who wasn't that big a fan of like real dance music would just sort of stick their head around and just sort of glare at me. Oh, <laughs> because it was getting it was getting a bit too, uh, yeah. I guess, like banging, and everyone was oh, just. Oh no! Going, it's this rebel Luke Sandler again. He's come back in and <laughs> changed the music. <laughs> well, I mean, so then, and then you just sort of fade, fade out of all these bangers, like into like the Bee Gees or something like that, and everybody. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah. Half the people are screaming because they're loving it, and the yeah. other half are like, "What happened to the party?" <laughs> So, yeah. 
Yeah, a bit of a divide on the dance floor. Now, I thought you were going to say the coolest place that you have ever played would be on one of the wards in the hospital. Have you, <laughs> have you ever played your music to patients or would that be completely not allowed? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure it'd be allowed. I'm not sure I'd ever subject the patients to that. Um, <laughs> So no, I, ha I haven't played on any wards in the hospital. Um, oh, that was a really cool story. <laughs> usually things are a bit too hectic for me to be yeah. doing stuff like that. Um, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I think I, I'm not that I'm not that person. I think I I would just die of embarrassment if I, <laughs> if, I if I or someone else had done that. I I think I'd have to leave the ward. <laughs> yeah. You'd be fired on the spot. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so um, I guess let's do a little sweep up of your socials then so that people know where to find your pages and where they can download your music. Tell us your social media handles. Um, so it's usually um, at, Luke San at Luke Sandler Music uh, for, for all, all socials, um, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, everything like that. Uh, the Mind of Ours YouTube channel usually has all the official videos for the tracks um, and has our live streams, which are probably the, the thing most worth checking out. Um, and to find out about the events, Mind of Ours has um, Facebook, Instagram, um, and that's uh, at We Are Mind of Ours. And I would say Instagram is probably the easiest place and best place to stay up to date. Um, that, that's the one that I tend to just yeah. throw things up on the, the easiest. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for yeah, joining you, me, Luke Sandler, DJ producer and NHS doctor. Who is this? <laughs>